Hi and welcome back to the next lesson. In this lesson we are going to start to build our risk management dashboard. So the first thing I want to do is just create our, um, our import the data. So I'm going to click on here import data from Excel and we can see that we've got the data there, work order details. And here we have it there. So the work order details. Um, I'm going to go and transform the data. And I always like to just take a look at the data before we we, um, we pull it into the, the data model, just to make sure that everything looks OK. And the right data, um, data types have been assigned. So we can see here we want numbers to be numbers, text fields to be text fields. Let's go along here. Yeah, this is a date. That's fine. Now I'm going to change that date because we don't want the time. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go and change this just to be a date. And we won't have that time, but it's it's it's, not, it's useless anyway because it's a zero. So I'm going to replace current. Um, this condition for work is fine. Everything else looks okay. Scheduled date is a date. I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to go in and I'm going to change this to a date. And then we can see here, this is what we want to avoid, is these additional columns here. And, and also we're looking along here to make sure we don't have anything that's this data type here, which signifies an unknown data type, any. So we don't want that. Um, now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into Home and I'm going to go to Choose Columns. And I'm just going to go and choose the columns I want to keep. And I'm going to get rid of these. But essentially, I'm going to just keep these columns here. Um, OK, so I think that is it. The only other thing I'm going to do here is just change that, get rid of this V2. It's probably because I've done this a few times before that it's, um, it's, it's auto naming this query. And then I'm just going to go and close and apply. OK, so the data is now in here. And if we look in here, we can see that it has all been imported and we are happy enough with that. So that's good. So now I'm going to go and start building up the dashboard itself. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add in a header. So I'm going to use a text box and I'm going to go into general and I'm going to make it 80, 80 wide or 80 high. And I'm going to just make this the size of the actual screen itself. And I am going to change the background. And I don't like really any of these custom colors. So I'm going to use one of the colors that I use as part of the color scheme for my effective dashboard site. And then in terms of the header, I'm going to make it white. In terms of the text, I'm going to put it to 20. And I'm going to call this overall defect risk status. Now I might change that. But that'll be um, that'll be what we'll call it for just now, and then we'll just call this overall status. Okay, so that's just now set the kind of foundation here for adding in our visualizations. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go and create the risk management or the risk matrix. Now, to do this, I'm going to go and we're going to use an add-in, and we're going to go and use an add-in that's going to allow us to overlay some data on top of a, an actual um, an image. So I'm going to go to Get More Visuals. And we're going to search for something called the Synoptic Panel. S-Y-N Synoptic. I think that's how you spell it. Synoptic panel. So this is what we're going to use. Now, once that's been imported, we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is we need to get an image that we're going to go and use to overlay or create areas that we want to represent each square in our risk matrix. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint presentation. So you'll find in the PowerPoint presentation that um, I'll, I'll go through here, you'll find in Appendix A, we've got this image of a risk matrix. So this is just a, um, a table in Excel, uh, sorry, in PowerPoint, and we need to export this as an image. So we go in here 
and there should be an option to save this as a picture. Hold on a second. Save as picture, it is there. Okay, so I'm going to go and save this to a place on a network drive as a, a PNG file. So I'm going to call this this matrix and I'm going to save it in here. Okay, so that's has now got the image that we're going to use and we're going to identify and we're going to use this to, um, to allocate the different areas that we're going to then go and add in the count of the number of defects. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go to the company and website for this visualization. So here it is here. So it's called synoptic.design. Synoptic.design. So I'll add that to the PowerPoint as well. Um, so you can link to it. And it's a fairly straightforward website. Um, the first thing you need to do, it tells you that it's a, a company and website for the Synoptic panel in Power BI. And we're going to pull in the risk matrix that we just exported here, that image, that PNG image. We're going to pull that into here. So let me just go and browse and find that in here. And here we can see it's in here. So once it's in here, we need to go and allocate an area for each one of these linking back to our data. So the area that we're going to allocate to here is going to be the risk ranking. So let's just quickly go back and look at our data so we can see how that's going to work. So I'm going to flip back to the data here. So this value here, 1, 1. Now that value there represents this area here, 1 and 1. Okay, so it's the likelihood and severity, one and one. So that's the area there. So what I want to do is I want that area there to be called one, one. So I'm going to click on that one, one. And then the next area is going to be called one, two. And then one, three, one, four, and one, five. Okay, so the likelihood and severity are the coordinates. So let's go back and look at our data again. And we can see here it's likelihood and severity. So 1-1 one, one will be the count eventually of all of these um, pre-mitigation or post-mitigation, depending on which one we want to um, allocate. All of the, this will reconcile the count of all of these 1-1s one, or 1-2s or 1-3s or 1-5s or whatever into this corresponding box here. Okay. So the next one is going to be, if you click on here, now it's going to try and auto populate this with the next one and we're going to go and change this and we're going to change this one to be 2 1 so I'll change it across here to 2 1 you can see across in the the box here and once you once you seed this with a number it will start to increment it so it's important that you start from the bottom and work up and it will just automatically implement it and that's using this wizard here so the wizard because I've got this thick white quite, um, white borders here, the wizard is able to identify an area on our behalf. Now, you can allocate the coordinates, but it looks as if it would be quite cumbersome. Um, so definitely, if you're, if you're doing this, try and make the area that you want to reconcile to a, um, a, a field within your data model or a value of a field within a data model. Make sure that it's got a, a really defined border so you can use this wizard here. However, you can do it manually as well, but in this example here, um, it's, it's a lot quicker just to do it with the wizard. Okay, I'm going to move on and this one here is going to be 3, 1, 2 and 3 or 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So we're going to call it 3, 1, 3, 2 and I'm just going to continue to do this. Four one, And then finally I'm going to do this one here which is going to be 5, 1, and then up to 5, 5. So that is us. We have now got our populated risk matrix, and this can now be exported using this button here, export to Power BI. And it's going to basically give you some, um, it's going to give you some instructions here, but essentially you just basically right click on here and save as. So this is going to be save image as, and it's going to 
you save it as this SVG document. And I'm going to put it in the same folder as I had with the other one, and I'm going to call this risk matrix. OK, so that's downloaded that risk matrix. So now if I go back to my Power BI file, and all I need to do now is I need to pull this in here. And before you can add anything, or before you can actually, it allows you to actually pull in a, 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 a what do you call it, a, an image. So there's no option to pull in the image here. You need to add in some sort of category. So the category that we're going to use is going to be the post mitigation likelihood severity. Now, so as soon as you pull that in, it's going to ask you for, or we need to pull in a measure as well. So the next thing we need to do is that we need to measure, and the measure is going to be the count of these um, work orders with that post mitigation severity value. So I'm going to go and create a new measure. Because work order count equals, uh, and I'm going to go count rows, and it's simply going to be just a count rows in the table, and the table is going to be work order details. And then we can pull that in as a measure, and now it's allowing us to go and look for either local maps or a gallery. So the gallery is going to take you, allow you to pull something from online, but we want to go for local. And we're going to go into our, um, our folder here and we're going to look for that SVG file. So it's going to be this one here. And here we can see. Okay, so that has pulled in the value here. Now there's a few bits of configuration we've got to do and I'm going to cover that in the next video.